happy post Valentine's Day! Yeah! This is Coco Live and Undead. I am your host, Daniel Crozier, and I am joined by the amazing Peter Copper. Peter, how are you, sir? Hey, man. I think you need more blood. All right. Uh, probably so. I, th I think that's blood. accurate. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too healthy with all that blood ends up on the outside <laughs> of your body. <laughs> well, thanks for inviting me on, man. Yeah. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, you know, Peter, you, you, uh oh, we lost you there for uh, a split second. But, uh, you know, Peter, uh, you're Harry Walker, the miner, uh, you know, in My Bloody Valentine. You know, such a classic, iconic, you know, film from, from the 80s. And, uh, you know, we, we can't wait to have you out tomorrow night at the Dairy Arts Center, uh, you know, to, to screen My Blood, Bloody Valentine. And, uh, you know, to have you in attendance and be able to, you know, pick your brain. Uh, about uh, about that experience, and of course, you know you you have photos and everything, and and photo ops and and things to to sell and and uh, you know hang out with the the fans. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to be exciting. I'm 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 psyched. No, what's cool is that it's in my hometown, you know, so I don't have to jump on a plane and uh, <laughs> you know drive for hours to get anywhere. I just got to go up the road because I, I live in Lyons, uh, you know, so 18, 18 miles away from the dairy center. So that's, nice. that's a relief. And, you know, my two boys, their, their, their fiancés are coming, the future parents-in-laws are coming. So wow. it'll be kind of fun, you know, for the first oh time. God. Yeah. Man, that, that sounds like such an amazing, you know, family event is, well, I don't know, you know, like it'll be the first time that I meet the future in-laws and I don't know what they're going to think about having their future son-in-law as a psycho killer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if, if, you know, if things go a little sideways, hey, you know, yeah, we're, we we're right there with you. Yes, we have pickaxes. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and don't worry, everybody out there. They're inflatable. So, you there know, you they're fun yeah. and spongy. Mine's not. Mine well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, Peter. It's it, you know again. It's great to have you on. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How you got into you know acting? Oh well, there's a long and short story. But uh, I was a teacher in Montreal, and uh, I had a group home for kids, and I did that for eight years, and then I had a another group home for two years. And uh, one of my best friends that I played rock and roll with, he was a dairy farmer, okay? Mm. Nice. Uh, and what happened was his parents got in a terrible car crash and he didn't want to be a dairy farmer. He had a tow truck company in Montreal. And so he asked me one day if, uh, if I could take over the tow truck company because he had to go back to the farm, take care mm. of things because of his parents' accident for them to recoup. And I thought, well, I've been doing this for 10 years, taking care of these little kids and uh, they've all grown up. I thought, well, what a better time. So one night in the tow truck in the middle of wintertime in Montreal, I got this call and I had to go on top of the mountain in Mont Montreal. Mont Montreal is called Montreal. It's a mountain in the middle of the okay. island. And Montreal is an island, actually, in the St. Lawrence River. So I drove the truck all the way up to the top of the mountain. And there's, I saw these lights like shining up into the sky. And the long and the short, it was, a, it was an actor, this guy that yeah. was on a show called Snow Jobs an old, old English guy. And he had gotten a young ingenue up there and he was kissing her and this and that. And they, the car slid down into a ditch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they got dear. stuck, you know, 
with this oh. young 21, 20 year old. He must have been 65 or something, some old guy. And anyway, mm. uh, so I towed him out and he, we dropped the girl off and got her a taxi. And then I, I was driving him on the uh, his car back and uh, I said, you seem like an intelligent young lad. And I said, what are you doing, do doing a driving a tow truck, you know? And I said, well, I'm just helping a friend out. And, you know, I played rock and roll at Jesus Christ Superstar, this and that. Oh, really? Yeah. So he gave me this card to the National Theatre School. It was a friend of his, the director. Oh, and so cool. he said, give this guy a call, you know? And so uh, I said, well, you want me to drop you off at host? And he said, oh, no, no, no. No, just drop me off at the end of the street because he didn't want his wife to find out, you know, that oh. he'd been towed out of a ditch and he was with another girl. Yeah. So I ended up... Uh, <laughs> cleaning out the truck about four months later and this card fell out so i gave it a call and my uh, mm. brother knew this actor who had graduated from the theater school so he tutored me through and i along the short i got into the theater school and in my right. second year that's when i did my bloody valentine they released me to do my bloody valentine but the story cool. doesn't end there when i graduated yeah. the very first job that i got after three years of theater school uh, besides my bloody valentine Mm -hmm. was the show that this guy was on called Snow Jobs. He played the oh, maitre wow. d' in the chalet, like uh, up at uh, Copper or Vale, you know, a big yeah. fancy hotel. And so we met each other at the craft table, and I said, hi. Oh, that a young man. Said, you don't remember me, do you? Uh, no, not in the foggiest. You remember the tow truck on top of Mount Royal? Oh, 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 wait, mum's the word, mum's the word. <laughs> 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 that's awesome oh so my that's gosh how, that's how i got into acting because of him yeah wow full circle huh full circle. yeah full circle yeah wow mm -hmm. that's that's so cool yeah you, know, you know when it comes to like you know my bloody valentine i mean it's it's yeah stand the test of time for like 40 years 40 yeah 43 yeah. years wow, that's true 81 right yeah. Wow, that's that's tremendous, and you know, you know so many fans uh, seem to res respond to you and and the film, you know, so so favorably. But you've you've also, you know, on top of all the careers that you've you've mentioned in, in you know in the first few minutes already, uh, you've you've also gone on to like you know build homes and uh, and build tree houses and stuff. It, it, yeah, how did you get into you know doing that? If you don't mind me asking, uh, I lived in the country in Quebec, and up the road from us was uh, uh, a farmer. And what he used to do was he'd buy up uh, big farms that had gone yeah. bankrupt. He'd tear down most of the barn and make it into a horse barn, like smaller, from a dairy okay. barn. And then he'd fix up the house and he'd keep that five-acre parcel and sell it, and then farm the rest of the land. And wow. one summer, he asked me if I could come and help him. And I was mm -hmm. like, I think I was eight years old. And I was just, you know, shoveling cement and, you know, lifting rocks and doing this. But, you know, as time came on, he taught me about timber framing and, you know, the structure of building Ooh. a barn and post and beam construction. And by then I was about 12 and I could handle myself pretty well. And it just it just got from there. And, I, and then I used to take on projects by myself because he was getting a little bit older. And then that that always became my background for falling on, you know, extra money. And basically yeah. any actor, it doesn't matter if you're in the States or Canada or Europe or wherever you are, you, you almost need a professional hobby if you're going to mm -hmm. be an actor. And basically that was my hobby. So when I moved to Vancouver from Montreal, I I figured I should just make my own construction company. And my, my other friend, uh, Al, Miles, he and I ran that construction company for years and years and years. So I would take a Beaver de Havilland plane over to Vancouver from the Gulf Islands and work on shows like Street Justice or with Johnny Depp in 21 Jump Street or, you know, uh, Christopher Plummer or Diane Keaton or any of these actors. You know, I, I had another career as Liam Blackwood. Yeah, and, uh, I, I changed my name right out of theater school after I did my bloody Valentine from Peter to Liam uh, for personal reasons. And so uh, not too many people know that. <laughs> so now, you know, right. right. <laughs> my other life, so. you know, my other lifespan. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, you're you're doing all oh, man, <laughs> such a storied life. I love it. You know, you're going off, you know, doing all these like different shows, movies. 
TV shows, and, and then stage acting too, like Shakespeare and everything. Yeah, I was trained as a classical Shakespeare actor. That's what the three years of theater school is all about. Mm -hmm. So um, right. as a young actor, I toured for six years and I didn't have a home. I just slept on my friend's couches because mm -hmm. we did all the Inuit villages up in the high north of Canada from Alberta, yeah. Saskatchewan, into Manitoba and then to Quebec and we would just fly in the same same on skid beaver de Havilands that would land on the snow and that's where I got my training was working with little kids and you know I had a penchant for working with children anyway because that was the beginning of my career as a teacher so right. uh, I always those are my favorite people dogs yeah. and little kids oh, that's cool. <laughs> awesome. yeah so if you can cut your teeth and, and keep a bunch of kids uh, happy and entertained and and focused for an hour, you, you know, yeah. you got it made. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's so fun. Yeah. It, well, in, in, now in, in Colorado, you're, you're building, you know, tree houses and stuff. Yeah. Is that also geared towards, uh, you know, kids or families with kids or? Yeah, mostly uh, on our property, we have five acres here and we have an Airbnb tree house called the little red tree house. So that's Sweet. open from May till the middle of October. Mostly, uh, people that are going up to the mountains. There are a lot of weddings. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's five wedding venues in, in Lyons, Colorado. And so cool. uh, most of the people that uh, get wed just want somewhere close and romantic to go to. So, yeah. you know, um, that was the flagship. And so I built like uh, platforms for teepees in the woods. So you put the teepee on the platform. Uh, so there'd be like three or four teepees up in the trees. And then in the wintertime, you take them down and cover it with a tarp. Or I built like little ranch houses for two girls that were cowgirls here in Lyons. And, oh, and cool. you know, down in the Black Forest, I built tree houses down there for little girls as well. It's funny. It's almost the girls. I haven't built one for, oh, no, I built one for a boy. That was it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most <laughs> of them have been all for little girls. And then yoga platforms for you know, Ooh. the yoga crowd in Boulder. I'm sure you'll appreciate that gang. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we'll be uh, seeing them tomorrow night. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah. yeah. Yoga. I, better watch, I better watch my jokes there, you know. <laughs> oh, I don't want to insult they're... the yoga people. Oh, they're, they're fine. You know, them and their yoga mats, they can, they can take it. Yeah. yeah Trader Joe's, you know, they take their yoga mats into Trader Joe's for some broccoli. <laughs> sorry, right sorry sorry uh, i'm sure they could do yoga around the uh, pickaxes and stuff yeah, you yeah, know pickaxe yoga i mean you know there's, yeah. there's goat yoga there could be pickaxe yoga why not there you go horror yoga you know yeah the the new yogi is the minor oh dear yeah, yeah. <laughs> say much but you know he's got all the action yeah that's true it's just, just follow what he does okay <laughs> that's that's awesome you know when when you go out and do uh like different conventions and events you know is, is it is it a, you know, a lot of fun to kind of connect with the you know the kids that are just you know kind of uh, coming across uh you know my bloody valentine for the first time yeah mo for the most part a lot of it has to do with their parents that 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 yeah. said hey man you should check this out and then you know, it's gone through uh, one, two, three. There's gone through uh, three different re re recuts. You know, so now there's the steel box, which is a high definition Blu-ray, and I, I'll bring that tomorrow to the film, and hopefully cool. they'll be able to use it on their Blu-ray because that that has most of all the scenes that were cut put back into the movie. Uh, okay. Uh, so they're all extended kills now, and the the, the movie makes a lot more sense. Uh, it, it, you know, the way George Mahalka had intended it to be. And that yeah. was a lot of hard work that you know ended up on the cutting room floor. Yeah. You know, back in the eighties. So uh it's nice to see it all back in there again. Yeah. Oh, that's but that's back cool. to the fan. The fans are uh it, it's gone through this revol revelation, you know, it's gone around and around and it has like its new crop of people that are just uh they I think because of the new films uh, and what they've done to it, uh mm -hmm. it's cleaner. It appeals to the filmmaking now, you know, because that 35 mil back in the day was a little grainy. Mm. And I think sure. the kids now really like the clean cut. And and mm. it's very humbling to have them come to the table and, you know, say that they enjoyed the film. That's for sure. Nice. Yeah. Nice. 
that that's cool. It, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like they're living kind of vicariously through through mom and dad, as you suggested. Yeah, or they saw when they're eight years old, you know, and I was like, yeah. really? <laughs> Your parents let you yeah. watch that at eight years old, you know? Right. So they they've grown up with it. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting to see, you know, uh, what what kids are able to 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 watch like today, especially with like the internet and everything. So you know, yeah, so widely yeah. available, you know, at the the push of the button. I remember growing up and you know seeing uh, like uh, you know, Poltergeist for the first time. Oh, yeah. it took me forever to convince my parents to con you know uh, to to have them rent the VHS for me and then. <laughs> yeah. And then to be horrified and, and you know, uh, not being able to sleep that night. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, you know, back in the day, you weren't getting the screen splashed with blood. You're doing more psychological dramas, you know, like Rosemary's mm. Baby or The Exorcist yeah. or, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. But now it's gone with green and blue screen. It's gone full splash, you know, like right. more more limbs you can cut off the better. And right. I'm, more, I'm more of the psychological based one, you know, mm. so, you know, I have yet to see Russell Crowe's uh, The Exorcist, you know, like uh, set in Rome. Mm. I'd like to see that and see what. Right. Have you seen that at all? Which one? The, the Russell uh, Crowe's latest movie. He's a priest. Oh, he, he, he uh, the, the Pope's Exorcist. Yeah. Yeah. The Pope's yeah. Exorcist. I'd love to see that one. I think I did. Funny. Yeah, I, actually, I did. I did see that. I saw it on a plane ride uh, uh, home from Costa Rica. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that that played pretty well. That was that was that was pretty cool. I think that I think that one's also getting a sequel too. I think that did well, well okay. enough that uh, they're they're going to push that. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, that's yeah. Those type of films are are really you know fun. Some of that supernatural psychological. Uh, you know, you, you've got uh, movies like uh, you know, The Nun, The Conjuring Universe, oh, yeah, yeah. stuff that kind yeah. of plays plays into that. Um, and it's like there's but, never an ending in a way. You know, it seems to be this is going right. to go on forever. You know, <laughs> right? It, Just because it, of the the cycle in it. Yeah, I th I think that's uh, for me. That's a little problematic for like storytelling because I, I like that sense of closure, of beginning, yeah, middle, and end. Close yeah, it, it just just like you would have in in a, like a stage play, you've got the you know uh, you, you've got the you know the three parts or the four parts, you know, True. and and, and uh, you've got that sense of closure usually at the end. Uh, otherwise, it's just like, well, I got to come back next week to see what happens next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, or it's a series, right? It's on Netflix. Right. Series. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's always tough when I see a movie that does that, you know, and it's just like, you know, kind of leaves it open ended, and you got to come back for the next one or wait for the next one, and it's just like, there's no sense of closure, there's no really catharsis, you know, it's True. it's it's open ended, and then, uh, but but yeah, I, I love it when when a movie, you know, you know, can tell a complete story and and really you know, best in their audience as well as you know the characters that they're conveying well you know at the end of my bloody valentine axel says i'll be back uh, and I'll, I'll kill you all so He's, we're still waiting <laughs> yeah we're still waiting to, we're still come waiting. on peter yeah. <laughs> come on back <laughs> i know well george has worked on a lot of different uh, scenarios and uh, mm -hmm. two years ago i was in europe and i i i, I went to budish uh, come on he's a I went to Budapest where he, he was doing a, a film uh, kind of like Game of Thrones. He was writing it. Mm. So it took him over two years. And, and so uh, he and I went out for a couple of suppers and this and that. Nice. And I said, so what's the deal? You know, is it going to go or what? And he said, well, I'm still working on it. He told me the ending, which yeah. I sworn to secrecy that no one will ever guess this time if it gets made who the killer is. It's, it's really good. Nice. But that's all I can say. <laughs> oh man well you know we we wait with an anticipation you know in, in the meantime you know you've uh uh participated as a producer on on a fan film right valentine's uh you know bluff yep yeah can you well, talk that, to us uh, the deal with that was uh the guy that makes the uh artificial pickaxes the convention say pickaxes and it's one that i i take now to the con cons 
he and I became friends. Cool. His name is uh, uh, Chuck Ryan. And yeah. uh, he plied me for years on, you know, the length of the pickaxe, the weight, uh, dimensions. And uh, then his cosplay, because he does the minor, he plays me. And so after a couple of years of that, uh, uh, he met a director, uh, you know, an indie director, and they put a script together. And so uh, I gave them some production money and they uh, uh, they did their fan film, which is very humbling, you know, because uh, just like a fan coming to the table at it, asking for your autograph 43 years later, it's like, my goodness, you know, uh, when yeah. does that ever happen? And same for someone who wants to uh, reproduce a film that they idolized for years as a mm. horror fan. And now they're directors and actors and, and uh, they did a good job that, you know, kudos nice. to them on a $10,000 budget. They, they did really well. Wow. Yeah. So that's, this May, I'm going to go back to uh, PA and there's the Mahoney drive in and, and uh, we'll, we'll show both of them. We'll show my buddy Valentine and the fan film and we'll, they're going to build sorry. a little set a mining set for us and we'll sign some autographs and meet, meet uh, two different classes of fans. The, fan filled people and, and the yeah. bloody Valentine people. that will be cool. Yeah. Wow. That sounds awesome. That sounds absolutely amazing. Well, you know, there's, there's not too many drive-ins left in the world right? and this right. in the North America, I should say. And, uh, you know, this is one of the best. So uh, I'm looking yeah. forward to, to getting back there. Oh, that's cool. Yep. And, you know, uh, Peter, you also participate in a, a number of uh, like charity events, uh, you know, uh, throughout the years, right? Yeah, uh, that all started with, uh, um, let's see, uh, uh, in Dallas, their, their festival of horror there. And uh, cool. he, he asked me if, uh, if uh, first, before I went to that, to do that con, if I would come down and do a, um, a charity event for uh, Stop the Stigma, which is a anti-suicide prevention mm. charity. So all yeah. of the signings went to that and they showed the film and i did a q a so i've done about th four of those now and nice. my uh the, i just came back from uh, las vegas and just missed taylor swift <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh and i did uh, uh, a signing for um st june's hospital so that's my main uh, charity that i i give to you know oh, it's awesome. just uh I, I'm still working. So these things are just, um, the more you give back, the more it comes back. You know, you got to give, you got to give. Yeah. And it's, for oh, children. and it's, it's full circle again, you know, like, uh, kids are my, my most favorite people. So, yeah. 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 Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's mm -hmm. so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I think, uh, you, you just mentioned, uh, that, uh, you came back from, uh, 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 a museum event as well. Yeah, Tom Devlin's uh, Monster Museum in Boulder City, Nevada. It's only about Sweet. nine to ten miles outside of Las Vegas, and cool. it's a cute little town. And he's got this really cool monster museum there that he he's done over oh maybe a hundred and seventy indie films where he creates all the monsters himself, all, right. and all wow. the effects, you know, the fake hands and the blood and the this and the creatures mm -hmm. and stuff. And he just finished. Uh, werewolves and from outer space with motorcycles so a motorcycle again meets up with right. these werewolves from outer space and he did all the werewolves and they're like the real deal because he, nice. he plays in a, a punk band and we went over to his warehouse to get all this the band stuff yeah. to put into the yeah. museum because they're going to have a par a party after i signed and cool. uh, tripped over all these werewolves <laughs> <laughs> these costumes. it was very cool very cool. Oh my god! Like they that look like the so real amazing. deal, man. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. an amazing artist. So if you ever get to Boulder City, Nevada, or to Las Vegas, just take an Uber out to his museum. You, you won't be disappointed. He's created an amazing, amazing museum of of creatures and monsters. Yeah. Wow, that's that sounds wonderful. Uh, you know, Peter, we're, we're almost out of time, but oh. yeah, I wanted to thank you for for coming on and and you know talking to us talking to us about, uh, you know, your, uh, your career in acting and, and your woodworking and, uh, you know, construction, uh, background, uh, as well as also the charity events that you're, you're doing, uh, you know, uh, for the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. And, 
it, you know, for everybody out there, uh, you know, tomorrow night, uh, uh, Colorado Festival of Horror and Friday Night Weird is, uh, you know, hosting an event with Peter. Uh, amazing screening of uh, My Bloody Valentine, uh, you know, at the Dairy Arts Center. Uh, it, it's, yeah, I'm being told it's a sold out event, so it's gonna be a full house. And yeah, it's uh, sold out. So you know, if you want, if you have like. Um, <clears throat> you know, mini miners, uh, you know, uh, the, mm -hmm. from Fright Rags or a Shout or something like that, and you want to get them yeah. signed, uh, uh, I think the gates open at 7.30. And right. uh, I'm going to be there throughout the whole movie. So, you know, from 7.30, the movie starts at 8.30, so 9.30 to 10. So basically yeah. from 7.30 to 10, I'll be in the lobby signing autographs. So I know you can't get into the movie if you haven't reserved. But right. do, do drop by for a chat and uh, and uh, I'll sign anything you got. Or I've got a whole, I've got two tables worth of photos and posters and stuff. And it's okay. $20. So my normal fee cool. at a con is $40. So because it's a hometown thing, I, I dropped it down to 20 And uh, oh. yeah, I'd be more than happy to see you all. So don't be shy oh, that by if you can. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear that, Colorado? Go hang out with Peter. Come on. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Shy, ask questions. You know, we we covered a little yeah. bit here, but there's, you know, there's a whole movie to talk about. So if you you want to come true. and have a chat, uh, more than welcome. That's true. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, the the event uh, yeah uh, link is scrolling down below. It's also in the uh, the, uh, the comment section. So yeah, you know, yeah. You know, for more information, feel free to hit us up. Uh, we we can't wait to to see you come out. And you know, Peter, again, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's it was such a privilege to to be able to chat with you and, and learn so much more about you. No worries. I, I look forward to to seeing you tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm bringing a bunch of these. <laughs> I'll buy one off of you. <laughs> oh, buy one. I will give one, sir. Ooh, it's boy. yours. <laughs> All right, man. I'm also, I'm also bringing some coloring sheets too of of you and as the miner too, oh, so people okay. can can, uh, can have a beer and, and uh, doodle you up. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. Uh, stick around for a minute while we sign off, but uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Take care. Bye, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in tonight, and of course. Uh, you know, to all our sponsors, to Mutiny Information Cafe, if you're going to start a revolution, make sure you're caffeinated. To our friends at Hellfire Entertainment, thanks for rebroadcasting us on your social media. And to Groovy TV, and of course, to Angela Joseph Productions, to Angela over there, thanks for putting up with me. And uh, my producers, Amanda Armstrong and Stephen Santa Cruz, thanks so much, guys. To everybody else, that tuned in. Thanks so much, guys. Come see Peter. Come visit the, you know, see the film on the big screen tomorrow in Boulder at the Dairy Art Center. And, uh, yeah, you know, bring, uh, well, just come hang out, have a beer. It'll be fun. It'll be such a good time. Can't wait. And, uh, of course, have a good night, everybody. Till next time, stay spooky. We'll catch you later.